Version 2022.1 of GameMaker Studio 2 is now in stable, and with it comes some cool new changes. The first of which you'll notice is that version numbers have changed. From now on, they're naming the versions based on the year and month of release, making this the January release, 2022.1. This also gives us a very clear roadmap for when the next release will arrive, 2022.2, at the end of February. It's nice to see them committing hard to their new monthly release schedule. New cool things are arriving in GameMaker so much faster than before, it's hard to even keep up. So that's great. It's also just nice in my opinion to be able to tell when a past version released as well. They have also specified that specifically July and December will not see new releases, I'm guessing for holiday reasons, so you won't see a 0.7 or a 0.12, those will simply be skipped. This all seems and well is a very trivial change, but I really like it actually, it helps demystify the version numbers a bit and clarify expectations going forward. Filter effects can now target a single layer. I mentioned this in the last release, not being able to target a specific layer really hampered how useful this feature was, and now it feels a lot more complex. You can apply filters directly to a single layer now using new GML functions and also in the IDE using the layer inspector and only using the layer inspector. It's not available in the layer properties window for some reason. I'm not sure I'm following the logic on why some features and settings across GameMaker are or are only in the inspector and others are not. Generally I think this is being pitched as a way to do more on one screen with less reliance on workspaces and to be able to kind of pin certain editors or settings while you work on other things. But I think that's a tough goal to reach while there's still so much disparity in what can or can't and can only be handled by the inspector. Tough one. Either way, the inspector now works with room layers, mostly just to control this one feature, and also with fonts if you need your font settings up while full screen coding. Bounding boxes have seen a significant change, which I covered in detail in a separate video earlier this week. There will be a link on a card and in the description, please do go and watch that. It affects some of the code I've written tutorials for that I'll have to redo in the future. In short though, bounding boxes are now calculated as floating point values instead of integers, and they are inclusive of the full mask, which hopefully will lead to less issues of rendering not matching up to collisions. That said, I highly recommend using the collision compatibility mode for existing code and projects rather than trying to rewrite your project's fundamentals. This effectively just reverts the change to how it used to be. Looking over to the full release notes, we can see a few general improvements with things like runtime updates, image format updates, and therefore improved build times. Something I have to talk about that unfortunately has not quite made it into this release but is available in beta is the new IntelliSense that GameMaker is calling Feather. I've taken a brief look at this in the beta and it's very exciting, but clearly there's also a lot of work. There's some amazing new hover over functionality. Variables can show you their types, assets can show you their data and images, and functions can even show you their definitions and arguments without having to load the manual. There's also some improvements to auto-completion, given that so much more information about your code is being tracked. Using self inside of a with, for example, will know what it is referencing and get the appropriate instance variable. Feather will also provide a ton of suggestions, warnings, and fixes for your code that can help you avoid common pitfalls. They're still working on the rules for this and also providing you some controls to ignore certain rules etc. Kind of like a grammar checker for your code. You'll be able to turn all this off if it annoys you but the potential for this is really exciting to me and I can't wait for it to come to stable. Those are the big highlights from version 2022.1. There's also a ton of bug fixes and other more specific changes so I always recommend actually reading through the release notes to see if anything might affect you or your project. That's all from me for now though. Thank you to all my patrons and if you find these videos helpful you should know it's only because of my patrons that these videos exist. You too can be one of those people by popping over to patreon.com forward slash seanjs, or you can like, subscribe, press the bell, or do any or all or none of those things. I'm just glad you are here. Catch you all next time.